Hey everybody, Jake here and welcome to the hobby. Got an interesting video for you guys today. We are going to open up a $100 Pokemon mystery box purchased directly off eBay. No links to their storefront. I am not advertising for their store if the box turns out to be great. And if the box is terrible, I don't want people harassing the seller. I bought this mystery box from a random account. They don't know who I was. They didn't know I was going to do a video on this mystery box and it is in no way seated. Let's check out the item listing description. So it says that it is the responsibility of the buyer to read and understand all of our terms before you bid or purchase. So that's a great start. You gotta love the exclamation mark. This is a Pokemon mystery box that has approximately $150 worth of value for just $9.99.99. About the items, sealed products, booster packs, or ultra rares, and ultra rares. Uh, our mystery boxes are a big crowd pleaser. We provide a wide variety of packs from favorite sets, hidden fates, shining legend, champion's path. You never know what you might get, but each one has approximately $150 value for $100 plus shipping we guarantee each box is guaranteed satisfaction take a chance be a kid again or buy one for your kids or grandkids to get them started in card collecting got the start them off young uh, this item description goes on for a lot longer they even had a picture of their storefront an, an actual brick and mortar storefront so this mystery box comes from a actual LGS or a local game store, which I find a little bit more interesting, much more likely that's gonna be very legitimate and reputable. All right, with that out the way, let's crack this baby open. First impression, it's packed pretty darn tight. It's not too heavy, nice box, got some weight to it, but I can feel a little bit of shaking, but not too much. A fairly decent size uh, mystery box if I have to say so myself. Let's see what we get and see if we can get back our $100 of value inside. All right, move, moving the wrapping off the top and we have ourselves first item out of the mystery box is a Unified Mind uh, check lane blister. That's what these are called because they are usually hanging when you check out at the registers of retailers. Pretty cool. I haven't seen one of these in a while. I think they normally only go for like $6. I'm gonna have to do a price check on the screen. But yeah, usually uh, these don't go for too much, but I haven't seen a Unified Mind Seal Blister in quite a while. People tend to pay a little bit extra for the sealed blisters rather than the loose packs. And we have a second one, neat. So we got two sealed unified mines, blister packs. What else do we have inside? We have a, wow, okay. Well, this is a um, mini binder is what they call each. Uh, it, it can hold like, I don't know, like 16 cards or something, not really crazy. I think this comes from one of the uh, chess, one of the, uh, how, no, what is it? One of the seasonal chess, the spring 2020 chess. I think this is where this binder comes from. Maybe worth like two or three bucks. And what else do we have in here? Next item out. Uh, oh, okay. This is kind of cool. We got actual vintage cards. Moderately played is what it says. MP is what moderately played uh, stands for <laughs> or MP stands for executor from the jungle set nice little stack of cards we'll have to check these out later might be something interesting in here that's a good start though all right what else do we have here a card in a top loader so that's a good sign and flip <laughs> oh my gosh it's a dub wool v uh, black star promo card from the dub wool v box nothing too crazy there but we do have some loose packs, quite a few loose packs actually, quite a few uh, loose packs. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight loose packs so far. 
We got Sun and Moon Guardians Rising, Crimson Invasion, Ultra Prism, that's actually pretty hot. Unbroken Bonds, a second Ultra Prism. We got Champion's Path, Champion's Path, and Champion's Path. Eight booster packs, but I see a couple more inside, so let's grab those. So wow, this is quite the bit of value just in the loose packs. This is kind of neat. Oh wow, okay, we got a, a Sword and Shield base, so maybe there's a Marnie full art in there. We got Champion's Path, Guardians Rising, and Darkness Ablaze. A total of 12 booster packs. Some pretty hot one. We got Champion's Path and Ultra Prism, Unbroken Bonds too. Some stinkers like Crimson Invasion, but no uh, Steam Siege or anything really crazy. Four Champion's Path packs. So this is gonna be kind of interesting to evaluate. Uh, we got 12 booster packs, some decent one, some kind of poor one. I would say that these would probably go for $4 per booster pack. And we have 12 booster packs, so uh, do the math. We have $48 here in booster packs. So wow, that's like half of our expected value already. So that's great. We might actually reach the $150 goal. What do we have here? A Rebel Clash build and battle box. These are very common with the LGS. Uh, I imagine this was one that they were not able to sell. Rebel Clash unfortunately came out right around the start of the quarantine period. So not a lot of stores were able to do a Rebel Clash build and battle day or where you would go into your local game store and actually crack a couple of Rebel Clash packs open and actually play the game. So lots of stores do have extra copies of the Rebel Clash build and battle box. So that's to be expected. This is actually kind of interesting. I've been seeing this thing hang out and I, I don't know what it is. It's a jumbo card. Okay, let's see what kind of jumbo card we have. And oh boy, we got ourselves a double B jumbo card. Wow, that is kind of interesting. Okay, I know exactly what happened here. What the person or the seller did was they literally took a double V box, a double V uh, collection box, broke it apart and put it all inside of the mystery box because we have the double V uh, small card, the jumbo card, as well as four packs of champions pass. So this is actually pretty common. What a lot of people will do is they'll take the premium collection, break them apart and sell the pieces because it's just a lot easier. The boxes are just way too big for a lot of eBay sellers. I bet you all of these packs probably came from some sort of collection box, you know, an EX box, a GX box, something like that. Uh, that's pretty common. So, okay, glad we got that out. Next item, we still have a lot more. We're only like halfway through this box, by the way. There's still a lot more in here, I think. We got ourselves a Morpeko pin collection. Oh, that's pretty cool. Does it only contain two packs? I thought these came with three packs. Two packs is kind of weird. Actually, if I were to look right there, I can see a second pack. So there is three packs in here. This probably came out with the release of Sword and Shield because it's all Sword and Shield base set packs. The Morpeko is kind of cute though. All right, let's see what else do we have inside. I know what's next right away. And that is a Detective Pikachu. A case file. Oh, all right. I, I haven't seen one of these in a while. Uh, a lot of stores have quite a few of these. These did not sell super well. And there's a big reason for that. Uh, one of the big reason is that the Detective Pikachu booster packs, you don't need a lot of them. If you have like a couple of these Detective Pikachu packs, you can pretty much get every card in the set. The set only contains like 15 or 16 cards, I think. It's not a very large set. Uh, the Detective Pikachu set. So there's not a lot of reasons for you to purchase multiple Detective Pikachu packs. And another reason is if you look right there, it does come with a pack of a real Pokemon card set, but it's Crimson Invasion, which is a kind of a lackluster set. So there's not a lot of reasons why people would buy these. They didn't sell very well. Uh, but nowadays, I think they're actually worth a little bit more because prices on most Pokemon Seal products have been climbing. Okay, I don't know is there anything else in here looks like we got some more bubble wrap and okay looks like that's it uh we still have some 
Pokemon cards to go over. So maybe this will add to the value of the mystery box. But overall, so far, I think that was really solid. I enjoy everything I saw inside and we got some booster packs to open too. All right, let's check out what's inside this little vintage pack. I wasn't expecting a lot of vintage cards inside of this uh, mystery box because they didn't say that there would really be any of that, but I'm always gonna enjoy seeing some more vintage cards. So that's pretty cool. The content of this mystery box makes total sense to me. It looks to be just a lot of inventory that a local game store is trying to liquidate. It makes total sense, honestly. Just a bunch of miscellaneous products that they might have over inventory of, trying to get rid of in an easy way. And a mystery box or a grab bag is a great way to do that. So first up we have an executor. It's great that they have an MP right there because that tells me right away that this executor is uh, moderately played. So that's an easy pricing. Next up we have a Tauros light played from the jungle set. You gotta love that old fashioned artwork. Some people ask me about the old artwork. This is actual watercolor art by the way. Super cool stuff what they did back in the day. Uh, Tangela from the base set also moderately played. We got Vulpix, another cool car. Ooh, Arbok from the jungle set. Just a lot of you know, simple Pokemon, nothing real crazy. It looks to be just commons and uncommons. Maybe there's a hollow in the back. We got Cloyster, Geodude, also from the fossil, another Geodude. Oh, wow, this one's actually kind of cool. We got ourselves a first edition Geodude, not worth significantly more. Uh, honestly, a lot of the jungle and fossil first edition cards are still very, very affordable, especially the commons and uncommon. We got ourselves Ammonite Light Played, another Arbok, another Geodude, it's Geodude all the way down, and nothing else. Okay, so nice little stack of vintage cards. Uh, total value is going to be added up on the screen, but honestly, nothing too crazy. Uh, we got a bunch of booster packs to open though, and I think this is going to be really fun because some of these sets I have not opened in a while. We got Sun and Moon Ultra Prism, we have the Lily full art card inside of this set that is a $200 to $300 card if we can pull one. So here's hoping. There's some serious value in the Sun and Moon era sets nowadays. There is the code card if you would like to open up a booster pack for yourself on the trading card game online. It's pretty cool that the Pokemon company puts a code card for the online trading card game in every single booster pack. I don't know of any other um, card game that does something similar. We got Cosmog, Holographic Reverse, and a Lucario Hollow Rare. We're gonna have to price check this. I don't. I usually don't price check Hollow Rare cards, but yeah, you know, some for, for some of the more older sets that are out of print, like Ultra Prism, you might have something. What set is this? We got Unbroken Bonds, another really cool set with a lot of cool full art trainer cards that I've never been able to pull. And I've had to go and purchase the cards on the secondary market. Went through my collection for a lot of the Sun and Moon era sets. And I just saw a lot of gaps in my collection. Most of the gaps were full art cards and secret rare, hyper rare cards. Just lots of gaps. Still missing a ton of full art trainers. We got Geodude, Holographic Reverse, and in the back, uh, we got the Tag Team GX uh, Greninja and Zoro Arc. Classic. You can just tell by the color. I knew right away. Wow, that is a cool card. Unbroken Bond Tag Team GX cards have certainly been climbing in value. I don't know how much that card's going for right now, but probably a couple of dollars at the very least. We got our another Ultra Prism booster pack. The Ultra Prism booster packs by themselves uh, are worth more than $4. I'm pretty confident this is one of the better set that you can get booster packs for. One, two, three to the front. Let's toss the energy. These were selling quite a bit during the holiday. You could find these inside of the, oh, what it was it? One of the GX box from Walmart was selling a ton of these. Alolan Vulpix, Roselia, and I see a little bit of shiny glitter on the back. It is a GX card, which said, what is it? Ah, Don Wings Necrozma GX. 
not one of the hot poles from Ultra Prism, but we will take it. There's only a couple of hot poles from Ultra Prism. Uh, next up, Crimson Invasion. Mm, is there anything good in Crimson Invasion? I'm trying to think. Is there even a good full art car from this set? God. Uh, some I was looking over some of the sets, like Rebel Clash. Uh, I'll be honest, one of the reasons why I think Rebel Clash isn't super great. No real good Pokemon pull and no good trainer pull. So that's probably a bad idea for Rebel Clash. The Pokemon company can do better. They can just balance out sets so that most sets should have at least a desirable Pokemon, some desirable trainer. We got Reggie Gigas Holographic Rare from Crimson Invasion. Now we are on to Guardians Rising. Huh, who knows? Maybe I'll we'll get something good from this set. I don't really remember much from Guardians Rising. We do one, two, three to the front. Let's see if this booster pack jog some memory so far our polls have been really good so i'm i'm pretty happy with these these are legit packs they're not resealed nice quality choices alolan graveler holographic reverse and whale lord on the back you just gotta love that artwork nothing computer generated about that on to darkness blaze full art charizard v max anyone i already pulled a card not super hard of a pull but I'll take another one any day of the week. One, two, three to the front. Toss the energy. We got ourselves Gathorta, Kabu, Turbo Patch, uh, Torchic, Starly, Skarmory, Pansage, Gatata, Gawabala, Galarian, Darmanitan. Wow. Okay. Not a hot hit at all. Uh, but I know we got four Champions Path booster packs from this mystery box, so we could add up some serious value. Uh, this is, oh, yeah, it's gonna be real tricky. If we can pull something good, it could literally be worth the whole entire mystery box. Four booster packs of Champion's Path, that means our odds of pulling a Charizard, one of the expensive Charizard, is right around 2%. 2%, guys. So what I'm telling you is, there is a chance. There is a chance that we do pull something cool. But overall, I'm, I am fully enjoying this mystery box. I think this is exactly what you want from a mystery box. It's just solid variety. Like if you were a kid and you got this mystery box as a present, you would be like so happy. I would be super happy if I got this mystery box. But then again, you, is your parents spending you $100 on a mystery box? That's pretty nuts. So uh, my parents would probably have never done that. Hoot Hoot, Holographic Reverse, and in the back, another GX card. Sandaconda? No. Oh, Torkoal V. Okay. My guesses aren't always right. I can sometimes figure it out based on the color, but let's move on to Champion's Path. All right, let's check out these booster packs. Champion's Path was a lot of fun for me. I know it's a little bit of hit, hit or miss. It really comes down to if you can pull a Charizard or not, which I think uh, some people are salty about, and I think that's well-deserving. Uh, it is kind of lackluster that the only hot card is Charizard. They could have done a little bit better. When Champion's Path came out, me and a couple of friends just sat around and opened up booster packs for over an hour, and it was one of the most enjoyable experience I've had opening up champions pack or any booster packs in quite a while it's just a lot of fun to open up packs with friends we pulled three charizard uh during that pack opening so i was super happy would love to pull a charizard on stream or on video it just hasn't happened yet would love to see it we graded quite a few charizard as well with bgs best we got was 9.5 i think all of our charizards were 9.5 so a little bit disappointing on that we got Machap, Holographic Reverse, and on the back, it's a water type. Do I know what it is? I don't. What is it? Dreadnought V. How did I not know that? There's only so many cards in a Champion's Path. Dreadnought V might actually be the only water type ultra rare. Oh, God. I'm a fraud, guys. I don't know what I'm talking about. Champion's Path. All right, let's keep it going. One ultra rare. That's pretty average. If we can pull another ultra rare, I'd be super happy because that would be above average. We had a total of 12 booster packs and we've pulled 
four ultra rare cards. So we're right on target. This is pretty much what you can expect from your pack opening as well. I enjoy mystery boxes that have sealed booster packs. I think that's a little bit nice. Uh, adds a little bit. Oh, Guard of War V Max. Wow. All right. There we go. Uh, I would say we beat the odds. I am happy with that. Guard of War V Max. Got a couple of copies of this card already, but I'm not going to complain. That's a cool hit in my book. All right. Final booster pack. I don't know the value of this mystery box yet. Um, it would have been on the screen. If you're wondering why the value of these cards aren't being added to the total, it just wouldn't be right. You know, we've already added the value of the booster packs to the total value of the mystery box. You can't value a mystery box based on the pull from the booster packs, right? Like if this last pack has a Charizard, am I gonna say that this mystery box was worth over $300? That just wouldn't be right. But overall, I enjoy this. This is nice stuff. Honestly, can't ask for more from a mystery box. I think that's satisfactory. And we got Sent to Scorch, Hollow Rare on the back. All right, guys, that's the whole entire content of our mystery box. Overall, I am incredibly impressed. This is a nice array. This was a cool mystery box. I'm actually pretty happy with my purchase. I think the item description was a real dead on for how good it was. Some cool sealed products, some stuff that I, you know, probably wouldn't buy if they were on the shelf, but in a mystery box form, they were able to sell it to me. Really cool. We got the mother dub wool as well as the baby dub wool. Some cool pulls from our booster packs and some vintage Pokemon cards as well. I think as far as a mystery box goes, this is the kind of stuff that you would enjoy seeing. Some nice variety, some cool stuff. Uh, hard to really complain. I think it was well worth the $100 uh, cost. I'm not sure we reach $150 worth of value, maybe if you were looking at secondary market, but most of this stuff like, you know, the blister packs and the build and battle box are really $20 or $6, however much their MSRP used to be. Uh, certainly some of these items are worth more now, but yeah, overall, I'm satisfied with this mystery box. I think it's really cool. I'm happy with it. Can't wait to do another mystery box in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you guys think this mystery box was worth it, and I will see you guys next time.